What's going on guys? Uh, it's your boy Humboy checking in with you. Um, want to do a recap on today's game. Uh, the Falcons beat the Dolphins on a last second field goal. Um, Matt Ryan today was 25-40 for 336 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. Uh, Kyle Pitts he was the difference today. Um, I believe he caught eight passes for 100 and maybe 40 yards or maybe 150. Um, he didn't he didn't score a touchdown today, but he had over 100 or 150 yards catching. Um, but Derek Patterson was he gave him a solid rushing attack and. Calvin really, you know, he's Calvin really. But Tua Tonga Valua. His number today, 32 of 40, 291 yards, four touchdowns, but two interceptions. Um, both of those interceptions were stupid. He didn't have to toss the ball, but I only say but because he's still in the process of learning how to be a, a true quarterback. Because as he gets older, he'll realize those type passes aren't necessary to force. You know, you can always play for another down. Um, the second interception, he was basically getting sacked and he threw the ball up. Stupid, stupid. But, to his credit, now this is when he had two touchdowns already. He ended up throwing two picks. But to his credit, they found themselves down the 27-14 hole. Um... Yeah, they found themselves down in the 27-14 hole. Very next drive after that interception that he threw and they scored, he went down the field and he scored. Pardon the booger. He went down the field and he scored. Um, he led them proficiently down the field in the fourth quarter. Um, I think he might have sur surpassed for 150 yards in the fourth quarter with two touchdowns. But nonetheless, he... He cut the lead to six. Then the Falcons started marching ball a little bit, but Matt Ryan got the ball punched out on the third and, I think it was third and eight. Got the ball punched out, fumbled it, and he scooped it up. Same, very, very next drive now. Very next drive, Tua, and under, under three minutes in the fourth quarter, led them down the field. No, it was, it was under five minutes. He led them down the field, and he scored through a touchdown back in the end zone to Matt Hollins to give them a one-point lead, 28-27. Now, that was, on, that was at the 227 mark. From there, this defense, as I told my boy, they can't stop a leaky faucet right now. They can't, they can't stop anything, anyone, from scoring, period. Um, it was atrocious. I can't pronounce the word, but it was it was bad. Tackling sucks. Um, basically, soft coverage, soft ass coverage. I don't I don't know why they continue to play zone. I have no idea. But go back to what you did last season. You were more aggressive. You took more one on one chances with your corners. You know, you put them on the island to a degree, but you, you maintain that blitz package where you kept the quarterback guessing where he couldn't get comfortable enough to just sit there and wait for the guy to get up across the middle and throw it to him. He had to get rid of the ball quickly. Why not go back to that? I'll kind of tell you why. The veterans that they had before last, the veterans they had last season, they're gone. They're not, they're not in Miami Dolphins anymore. anymore. I mean, people say it's because of Brian, Brian Flores or whatever, but they're not here. Which means that his blueprint of being a defensive coach has been wiped completely clean. Because they right now, they, they can't stop a high school team from scoring on them. They really cannot. And again, I will harp on the fact that during the draft, they had opportunities to draft really good defensive players. Jalen Phillips is still a work in progress, but I felt like you could have got something better than him. You you could have literally built this offense around Tua, but instead now you're you're basically causing him to make dumb mistakes 
week in and week out that he don't have to make. Cause I think right now he's he's at he threw four touchdowns today. Last week he threw I think he threw two. And he threw two of the Patriots games. So he's at he said eight touchdowns and was it four picks? Which is not very common for him, but because of the dumb decisions he's making with the, the line, the way it's basically collapsing around him, that's a constant theme. They're constantly getting pressure on this kid. Atlanta Falcons of all teams got pressure on him today. The Atlanta Falcons, who I know for a fact they pass rush is straight boo-boo, but they managed to get in his face. Now, there were some instances where the line held up pretty well and he made the correct throws, but on the interception throw, there's no way J.C. Davis just whips on the block and then dude gets around and makes sure he knows two or steps up in the pocket. He's going down. He, you know, he decides to do a dumbass thing and throwing the ball up. That interception throw on him. I'm not going to excuse him for that one. Can't excuse him. But outside of that, it's almost like it's to me. It's almost like the entire the entire organization is throwing him out to the wolves, and they really want to shine so bad that they're willing to put this boy in a losing category over and over and over again. Now, next week, they got the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo. Now, the NFL is a strange organization because I don't think they're going to let the Dolphins go into this 17-game losing streak. I seriously doubt it. But somehow or another, they're going to find a way to help the Dolphins win in Buffalo to resurge their season a little bit, to get them a 2-6 and six start, and maybe... If they win in Buffalo, if they win, that's a big ass if. If they win in Buffalo, then maybe they can salvage their season to, to finish it strong, to at least push to get a wild card berth, to at least be able to make the postseason, and then possibly from there give people more hope to give to a chance. Because a lot of people write him off, and it's pissing me off now. He's only been back two. This is the second game he's played. No, it's the third game, but he's only been back since last week. When he played against Jacksonville, and he put over 300 yards, then he puts up 200 plus today, over 290 yards today, and people still saying, "Oh, he's trash. He sucks." Yeah, you may say that you know he throws for 10 yards, under 10 yards, or whatever, or he throws eight-yard passes, or whatever, blah blah blah. But if that's all the defense giving you, why would I take risk throwing the ball down the field and anybody, anybody there? So you want me to throw it to where the safety can go get it? I throw a pick on an attempted deep route, and then you say, oh, that's that's why you trash now. Really? My receiver is Jalen Waddle, who's who's 5'10". No disrespect to Jalen Waddle, an absolute monster. He he has seven catches, they've 83 yards. So he's getting his yardage. But most of his stuff comes from screen passes where he can get out and make people miss. They're not letting him go deep one-on-one -on -one against a corner or a linebacker. They're not letting him do that. Because you saw what he did in college. He was able to expose a lot of people who weren't as fast as he was. But this is the pros. And as Jalen Waddle saw today, they can catch you. But if you get around in space, he can make people miss. He did it today. So, you know, the, the game plan around this offensive system is not making any sense. The two offensive coordinators, get rid of one of them. The one that I forgot his name, the damn dude that coached to in the Arizona game that, that had to, you know, throw for 300 yards in that game and help them win that game. That guy needs to be the primary play caller, period. There's no need for two of them. No need for it. The defensive coordinator, he needs to be fired. Or if not, Brian, Brian Flores needs to be fired because there's no way your team is that undisciplined that they can't make tackles anymore. They can drug for extra yardage by receivers tight ends and running backs. Your defensive line can't generate no pressure. They can't shed blocks. They can't do anything. But you keep saying it's on me. 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 You're damn right it's on you. But if I'm if I'm a defensive player, I'm looking my I'm looking at myself in the mirror and saying what what the hell am I actually doing to help the coach out? Because my job is to make tackles. That's my job. The coach's job is to get me motivated to go out there and do my job. But if he don't, if the motivation come to him, come from him, it has to come from myself. Because at this point, I'm getting paid to lose games. And for what reason? What's the point of y'all losing? 
I don't. It's not the fact that the blowout losses wipe on the rug. When you lose by three points or by two points, like I did today, that shit hurts a lot because you were right there in the game to win the game. You went about one with 227 left, and your defense folded like a damn uh, a picnic table lunch chair. It folded. You gave up three consecutive first down drives, and they kicked the damn field goal at the 20 yard line to put y'all ass out y'all misery. When you could have stopped them way back then and got the ball back so the offense could kneel the ball down and run the clock out, and y'all would have had another victory. Instead, the entire fan base watches y'all go from a really, really high point from him throwing that touchdown back in the end zone to go up one to everybody looking like, well, we lost another one. Now we're one and six. And it's all harks back to what Brian, Brian Flores did in the offseason. Getting rid of people. People that he did not have to get rid of. Hey, they could they could have used uh what's his name? Shaquille Griffin. The the one arm linebacker, the hybrid linebacker. They could have used him today. He can actually make tackles. And that kid has one arm. He can make tackles. He can cover people. But I'm convinced that they're trying to sabotage this kid to himself so bad that they're going to say, okay, well, here, you, you you were known to make nothing out of something. Correction. He, he came from Alabama, which he was surrounded by five-star talent. But unlike Jalen Hurts, he, he maximized the talent around him because all them boys ate. Same thing he's trying to do now with the Dolphins. He's trying, he trying to spread the ball around. Whoever getting the ball, this is open. He's not trying to force. He made, like I said, the interception that he, that he threw was dumb. The one back in the end zone was dumb because water was right over and coming across the middle. But by, by the time he released the ball, it was too late. But those are things he can learn from. He's only 13 games into the NFL career, and people are already calling him a bust. He sucks, he's ass, he's trash, he this, he that. In 13 games, in 13 games that he's played in, and his record is 8-5 and five in 13 games. It's not great, it's not bad, it's decent. It's right down the middle. He's won more games than he lost. Even though way he's looking, he's going to end up losing more games and it's going to hurt his overall record. But this is a team concept. But yet, and still, Tua continues to be the main center of criticism and being attacked. And to me, it is getting pathetic. Because all this season, last week, against the damn Jacksonville Jaguars, he go, takes him down the field, he scores. They go up by one. Hmm? No, I'm sorry. They actually tie the game. Hmm? And instead of playing for overtime, they his dumbass defense decides, oh, we're going to play prevent defense. Trevor Lawrence is never going to throw the ball deep. Because for one, that's a waste of interception that he don't have to throw. For two, if he can get a quick first down and then get the field goal on the field, that's exactly what he was thinking. I never thought he was going to go deep. Because he already knows it's going to be knocked down and never go. Overtime, two are probably going to win that game. He's going to throw a touchdown to win that game. So why would you do that to yourself? And then this week, they go up 7-0. Atlanta go kick a field goal. They go, you know, they sustain a little drive in the stars. So then Atlanta gets the ball back. They score a touchdown before half. They come back out and score another damn touchdown. And before they know it, then, you know, Tua comes back, he responds, he throws a touchdown, but then he throws a pick. Then Atlanta scores. Then Atlanta scores again. So they go up 24 to 14 before they, before Miami can blink. And the next thing you know, Tua's find out of a hole that he himself, with the two picks, put himself in. But to his credit, again, I'll say this again, to that boy's credit, he fought the hell back, and he gave him a lead. He gave that entire team a lead. That's what you asked him to do, right? You asked him to march the team down the field and to give them a chance to win the game. You asked that of him. And in back-to-back -back weeks, what has he done? What has he done in back-to-back -back weeks? He's given them a lead to work with. He's given them something to, to, to fight for, which is to win a the game. They could easily be 3-5 and five right now. Easily. But instead, they fucking 1-6. You see the flip of the coin here? Who's it, who's it falling on? The defense. Say it with me, the defense. Because in back-to-back -back weeks, Tua himself has, has risen. 
He may have been buried throughout the game a little bit, but that, that motherfucker rose up. He rose up and he showed out, especially in the fourth quarter, which is what a lot of people look at when it comes to football is the fourth quarter. Well, if you look at the fourth quarter today, that young man rose up because most of his yards came in the fourth quarter. It's not all about what you do in the first two quarters. Yeah, he wasn't all that good in the first two quarters. The first first quarter he was. After that, he fizzled out for two quarters. But when that fourth quarter kicked off and he was able to get that ball back, he put the ball in the end zone back-to-back -back time, 14 damn points in the fourth quarter to help the Dolphins win. And they still lose because of the damn defense. So my real question to you guys is, should, should Greer or Flores be fired? Please help me figure this part out because at this point, what is what is the Deshaun Watson trade going to do? So you get rid of Tua, he goes to Houston. He spends he spent his, his he spent his remaining what 10, 11 games in Houston. Let's say he goes 500, 5 and 5, right? The next year, they build around him. They build around him. And then Houston becomes a playoff team. And let's say Miami fizzles out. With Watson at the helm. When you had Tua, what did you want to do? You want to get rid of him, right? So he goes to Houston. They go to the playoffs. When Watson comes to Miami. They don't win a lot. But he put up a lot of damn yards to make y'all happy. How's it adding up? How is, how is patting the stats more important than winning? That's what I'm confused about. You, you guys are confusing me now. Because Tua put up 291 yards, you still bitch. He put up 329 yards, you still bitch. Because they lose. They lost the games. They didn't win them. Now, if you put up 140 yards and they win, oh, well, he's still sucking anyway because he only put up 140 yards. But I won the game, though. That's the most important thing. So, you, you mean, you guys tell me what move should be made next? Let me know in the comment section. Um, this is a tough loss. Like I said, they got the Bills next week. I'm just hoping they stay competitive. I'm just hoping the defense will actually wake up, fight out blocks, play tighter coverage, force Josh Allen to make pinpoint accurate passes. Do not, and I repeat, do not play fucking zone the entire game. Put your best man on your on their on their best man and force them boys and force those boys to play actual defense or actual offense. Force them to make plays. Otherwise, it's going to turn into a route. And I don't think nobody wants that. But anyway, um, if you like the video, like I said, let me know your thoughts on the situation now that they're one in six. And let me know what you think the ownership should do. Peace.